Hi, and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue talking about partial derivatives, and we're going to tackle the topic of the chain rule for partial derivatives. Now, remember back to your Calculus 1 when you learned, uh, first learned about the concept of a derivative, then they introduced the chain rule, which was, <clears throat> as you remember, very powerful and, and very central, okay, to understanding calculus, to even getting started in calculus. You have to know the chain rule. It's super important, okay? So the chain rule for partial derivatives is equally important, and I think that by the end of this section, your, your mind will become expanded to sort of the general theory behind this chain rule stuff and what it means, okay? So remember that the reason we introduced the chain rule to begin with in calculus was, uh, you know, it's easy to take the derivative of sine, just the sine function. You get cosine, for instance. It's easy to take the derivative of, of uh, the logarithm. Uh, natural log. You get 1 over x, right? It's easy to take the derivative of x squared, right? It's just 2x, okay? Those are simple, pure functions, okay? But when you start to have functions nested within other functions, okay, then you have to use the chain rule. So instead of x squared, what if you have sine of x all squared, okay? Or instead of natural log, what if you have natural log of x squared or natural log of sine of x. When you have functions nested within other functions, you have to use the chain rule in order to calculate the derivative, and the chain rule just is basically tells you you take the derivative of the outside function and you continue multiplying and taking derivatives as you chop on down to the inside until you finally you're, done, you're, you're, you're left with nothing. Okay? And we're not going to do an extensive review of that calculus one stuff. We're, we're past that now, but that is the foundation. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about taking the, uh, the partial derivatives of, t of two and three uh, variable functions, but let's say these functions are nested, so to speak. In other words, you might have a function of x and y. Remember our, our, our discussion of the flame underneath the flat plate? It might be a function of x and y, but x and y might depend on something else. Like x and y could, could that's a, probably a bad example, but in general you have a function of x and y. x and y could be dependent upon time, let's say. Or x and y, uh, you know, could be dependent upon, uh, you know, the day of the week, okay, or something like this. So when you have a function uh, of some variables, but those variables are dependent upon other stuff, then you basically have a nested function just like you did back in Calculus 1, but now it's a nested function of more than one variable, so it's a little bit messier, but there's a very pure, simplistic, bulletproof, easy way to, and method to learn how to take derivatives of functions like that when they're defined like that, and that's called the chain rule for partial derivatives. So let's do it. Okay, so recall, this is, a, I usually like to start the sections with something you already know, uh, so we're going to do that. Recall, let's say you have a function, this is a calculus one stuff, y is equal to sine of x squared. Okay, you know from instinct now that you need to use the chain rule for this because you know how to take the, the, the derivative of sine of x, but you don't have sine of x here, okay? You know how to take the derivative of x squared, but you don't have x squared just by itself. They're nested within one another, so you have to use the chain rule. And you'll, you'll also recall that the, the derivative of y with respect to x was equal to the derivative of this outside thing, the sine part of it. Derivative of sine is cosine, so you had your cosine of x squared. Okay, but then you had to take that and multiply by the derivative of the inside, which was 2x. Okay, and I'm not going to rearrange this or anything, but that's what you're doing. You're taking the derivative of this, leaving the inside kind of alone, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. And you're so used to doing this by now that you sort of apply the chain rule without even knowing it. That's, that's where you should be, okay? That's where I hope that you're at, okay? Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to expand our mind a little bit and learn about this and, and when they're a little bit more... Uh, more complicated. So the reason this works is because the chain rule, if you'll flip back in your calculus book, uh, should have taught you the following. Okay, I'm going to write a few more things down related to this sort of easy problem, and uh, I'm going to use it to build to build upon. Okay, so what you basically have here is what you have defined without really thinking about it. You've defined a function y, uh, and it's equal to two functions nested within one another g of f of x. Okay, this, this thing y that you've defined is g of f of x. Now you can see by looking at the function that g of x, or, or g of whatever, was the sine function, 
and then the inside of it is f of x. So you can just sort of see by looking top and bottom. The outside function, so to speak, was the sine part. The inside, so to speak, was the x squared part. Okay. So again, I'm going to write a few more things down here. Uh, what we have defined is y is equal to g of u. Bear with me here. I know I haven't even told you what u is yet. Just, just bear with me. Uh, but we said that that was equal to sine of u. Okay, I'm using u because it's a placeholder. Sine of it, we know it's sine of x squared. Basically, what I'm saying is whatever's on the inside of this thing is equal to u. So we've defined y to be some function g, which is sine. Okay, and we have also said I'm going to draw an arrow here. We've also said that u was equal to f of x, which is equal to x squared. Okay, so. What we have done by putting all together all of these pieces, I'm, I'm sort of unraveling, this is like a ravioli up here, I'm unraveling this ravioli and kind of spelling it out in excruciating detail, okay? Uh, what we've done here is we've said that y 